Hi guys, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a lot of favorites to go through, so I'm just going to jump in here and grab whatever's in front of me. The first thing I'm going to talk to you about, um, we're not going to talk very long about. I'm going to link a video because I just did a video not that long ago using the bomb uh, brows by Desi Perkins. It's a collaboration with Benefit. And inside the box is everything that she uses to do her bomb brows. And I did the brows for you. I wanted to show you, for those who didn't see that, how the kit comes together. But I want to show it to you again here uh, in this video so that I can take all this stuff out of here finally and put it away. I went to Target the other day to pick up a refill of my Pixie Skin Treatments Glow Tonic. While I was there, I found these. And I had been hearing about them on YouTube for a little bit. And I thought, I'm going to give them a try. But I didn't know which one to get. <laughs> so this one here is the Hydrating Milky Mist. And this is the Glow Mist. This one has argon oil in it. And um, this one has hyaluronic acid and some other things. This one here, you want to shake that right before you use it because it doesn't take long for the oil to separate again. You shake this up. And obviously, I guess you can see that this one I like a little bit more because I'm using it as a setting spray. and. That's what I have on today. <laughs> Mostly I like to use this one more like a primer. So I will put this on my skin before I start anything else. This is probably just fine as a setting spray or over your makeup as well. I just reach for this one a little bit more. This I've wanted for a very long time. Every time I go over to Macy's, I stop over at the Elizabeth Arden counter and I spray this on me. <laughs> It is the Elizabeth Arden White Tea Fragrance, and I love it. I picked it up with some Christmas money that I had, and I bought it at the place that sent me the opium perfume that I love so much. <laughs> I went there, and I noticed that I could buy testers. So I got the big, this was like 20 bucks, right? I wish I was good enough at um, expressing to you what something smells like, or even the right notes that are in this, which I'll probably put right here. I will look them up for you. I'm thinking maybe white tea is one of them. The only difference between a tester and the actual real thing is there's no cap. I don't care about the cap. I really don't. I want what's inside of here. No one goes in my room and looks at my perfume collection, so it doesn't matter to me there is no cap. And I got a bigger bottle. While I was at Target, I wanted to pick up another big Sonia Kashuk sponge. All right, I got to say, all around, this is the best sponge there is. You know that I will tear up a beauty sponge in nothing flat because of the way I dig my thumb into it when I wash it. I haven't tore this up. It's in perfect shape. Um, and the price really can't be beat at $7 for this sponge. This is an all around winner. And I know you're probably saying, Mary, you've talked to us about this sponge before, not that long ago. You're right, I did. That's not what I'm, I'm not talking about this sponge. I'm talking about a five pack that was over there. The five pack is $2 more than this sponge and it has the large sponge, this one. And I had got a three pack of sponges over there one time that was like this, right? And I didn't care for these two here, but I liked this one. This one is squishy soft like the big one, but these were hard. In this five pack, these two are not hard. So these three are winners. <laughs> there it goes. You get the big sponge and then they've added a new one. And I really like this because it's the squishy foam too. And it's got this flat edge here, a really defined point right here. So you can get right up underneath your eye. This is a great sponge, but I do want to warn you that I don't know why, but this big sponge and this big sponge, you can even see right here that the original one outside of the pack is bigger. This is the one that comes with the other sponges. There's like five in a pack and this is the large one. But look, I don't know if you can tell how hard I'm pushing here. It's not as big and it's not as squishy is that one. So I don't know if the sponge changed or if 
They just put a different kind. This is a lot more dense than this one, which is pretty squishy. I don't know why. I don't know if they've changed it. I hope not. I hope that they've not changed this. I do like this sponge, but it's not the same as this. Joy, baby. I have wanted these and wanted these and wanted these, and I got them for Christmas. I have two of the blushes and the bronzer. The blushes have this floral etching in gold, and the bronzer has these stripes. So you can easily right off pick which one of these is the bronzer. Here's the bronzer and I have it in light to medium. It's perfect. This is the perfect shade if you're really fair like me. The way I use these is I take my um, bronzer brush and I just sweep right this way, that way, and then onto my cheeks and around my face. That's how I use these. I use them both together. Same for the blushes. I haven't got a bad thing to say. I really like Jouer. Mm. Hashtag world's greatest writer. Sometimes when I use the blushes, I will use the dark one and then put the light one on top. But a lot of times I mix them together just like I do the bronzers. This one here I think is called Croquette. And then this one here is called Flirt. I'm wearing Flirt and the bronzer both today. So if you were wondering whether or not these were worth it, they are. Next, we have my old ratty jeans. <laughs> Actually, these are my favorite jeans, okay. but the button come off. For the longest time, I have run around with these jeans and not had the button. And they have like some stretch to them, so they fall down all the time. And then I'm constantly pulling them up. And when I do, look what I've done to the, to the, yeah. Oh boy, I need to pick up some thread while I'm out today and sew these because I love these jeans the most of any jeans I have. So anyway, I went looking for one of these buttons, right? So I could fix my favorite pair of jeans and it was like $8, totally worth it, right? Until I saw these, <laughs> this is a whole case full. And you'd be like, um, Mary, how many pairs of jeans are you gonna bust the button off of? <laughs> well, I figured if I could get one for $8 and I could get a big container of them, why not? But actually I thought maybe I might use the other ones to stud a pair of jeans, you know, down the leg. I don't know. In case you're like me and you uh, tape and staple your clothes. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching, turn away. <laughs> She knows it. Um, it comes with like a little nail thing, and then you put that on one side, you put this on top of it, and then you just take a little rubber mallet and go, bam! <laughs> anyway, definitely a favorite because it gave me my jeans back. A long time ago, I did a video on cotton. I know, right? I also one time did one on like the five best white eyeshadows. <laughs> But seriously, so I compared all these different cottons to Shiseido to see is it really the best buy or what have you. This company that makes cotton squares called Nolio, they watched that video and commented had I tried theirs and I'm like no, but it piqued my interest so I did. <laughs> and here it is. This is the Nolio cotton. Now am I saying that it is Shiseido? N no. It has another property about it that I like. So this is Shiseido and it's very, very soft. These likewise are very, very soft. Not as soft as Shiseido, but they are very soft. And this is how thick a Shiseido is. And this is how thick this is. <laughs> I mean, let's compare. They're not the same. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you. Top, Shiseido, bottom, Nolio. First off, you get 180 of these inside the bag that they send them to you in. Now, if you are like my friend Mary Ellen, you're gonna be going, wow, because look at this. I think she cuts Shiseidos. I think Mary Ellen cuts them in fourths, to tell you the truth. And I know a lot of people will cut them in half, so they have double that amount. The Nolios, look how much bigger they are. I'm just going to put this in the corner. So here's the Shiseido and this is the Nolio. But I leave them whole and I put my micellar water on there and I just go right all over my face with it and I love how big it is. Look how big that is halved. A quarter. 
I really like them. At Christmas, I cleaned up on getting Kira Sky dip powders. And I know this probably doesn't interest hardly any of you, but it does me. <laughs> and I love them, so I'm going to tell you about them. So the new additions to the family are uh, Time for a Selfie which is a white kind of iridescent glitter. This one's Vegas Strip, and it is also a glitter. Sweet Surrender, and I can't, I'm not even gonna try to say this. <laughs> Here, I'll show you what it is. I know I still owe you guys a video on how you do this. Enough of you wanted to see a video on how I do this and tips, but I've just not done it yet, so. Um, hopefully I will do that for you this year. <laughs> now when you do Kira Sky uh, or really any kind of acrylic nails or whatever, you can't just pick them off, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. Even if you have glue on nails or you have the impressed nails, you shouldn't just be pulling those off your nails. You're, you're hurting your nail bed. You need to actually soak them off with acetone. Now, for me, I like to soak them all at once. I don't want to take a soaked cotton and put them on each one and then put foil on it. I make a mess. Putting them in a bowl and soaking my hand like this for as long as it takes, because it takes about, oh, 30 minutes, I guess, to soak off a set of nails. So putting your hand in there, my hand, it, I guess I'm just getting too old now to do that because it feels like pain. Like my fingers are stuck like this from holding them that long and then straightening them out. It just, I'm getting arthritis in my hands and it's just now. Yeah. So one time I went to the nail salon and the girl there put my hands in one of these. And after that, I said, I'm getting one of these. And recently I did. Now, first off, if you don't know it, Warm acetone will cut your soak time in half and it, it feels better. And it seems to take away the odor of the acetone. I can do this right in the same room with Shy Guy and he doesn't even notice that I'm doing that. <laughs> Before, if you just put it in a bowl, he's like, what does that smell? So what you do is you pop this off, okay, because it's got these closures. Pop this off, fill this up with water, stick it in the microwave for about 40 seconds, and then it's warm. Then you can plop this down in here. And well, you would be doing this flat, not like that. <laughs> and you put, latch it down so that it's tight. Fill this with acetone. It doesn't really take very much. You have your own wells here. Because of this, you can grab your, you can tighten your fingers around that and actually walk around the house. I do that. I walk from room to room with that like that, and I can hold on to it if I need to. But mostly, I just set it on top of my lap, and I watch TV while my nails are soaking off. And this thing is only like four bucks. I'm not going to talk about this very much because I already did a video that I'll link here on it. And uh, it's the Delium Tools tri Golden Triangle brush set. They are fantastic. They have ergonomic handles here that feel so good in your hands and let you really control the brush a lot better. So I picked these up and loved them so much. Still do. They clean fabulous. This is the Sephora 93. Look how floppy this is. You know what this is good for and what I use it for and probably it's not what this is for <laughs> but I use it for highlights. This is such a feathery light touch and it does perfect for putting on highlighter. I was using the Wayne Goss fan brush for that, but I really like using this better. Uh, I suppose you could probably do your whole cheeks. You could probably contour with this. You could do bronzer with this. You could do blush with this and you could do the highlight for sure because that's what I use this for. This is a fantastic brush and I'm going to tell you that I've had a lot of brushes and from different brands ranging from Elf to Chicohoto. And nobody packages a brush like Sephora. It's almost aggravating, but their brushes are gonna come to you so well, like they have a tube over them. And then they've got a plastic case that snaps shut that goes over them. Obviously, I, I don't have that because I get rid of them because I don't want to have to undo these things to get my brushes. But if you were gonna travel, boy, those would be 
really good protection for them. And then they've got the outer plastic with the zip on it that <laughs> I've never had brushes that come so well packaged as Sephora brushes do. And any of you who have had them can back up what I'm saying. And then I wanted to try the Sonia G brushes. And so this is the Worker 3. It is so stinking soft. This is oh, such a great brush. They feel good in your hand. Everything about the Sonia G brushes just screams luxury. This one in particular does a variety of things. If I were you and you're wanting to try a luxury brush from her line, you might give the Worker 3 a chance and see if you don't like that too. Lainey sent me a card and with a letter in it that just really touched my heart and these cute little angel earrings. See her little head and wings. She's so cute and I had them on in a video recently and I just really love them. So thank you again so much, Lainey. My old slippers wore out. They were in pitiful shape <laughs> and I really wanted Uggs, but I just, can't afford them. I'm going to link these below, but I want to make sure that you know. These have a hard sole on the bottom. Obviously, I wear them even outside. <laughs> they have this gray heather kind of uh, wool on the top. Inside, it's so warm and soft, and there's memory foam in here. There you go. I want to tell you, in case you do decide to get these, don't send them back after you put them on. They are going to be really snug on your foot when you first put them on because of the memory foam. But after you wear them for a day, they will conform to your foot and they'll be the right size. I really like these slippers. I got them for my husband for Christmas. And Two concealers that I picked up that I absolutely love and both are from Lancome. This one I have had before. Uh, it's the Make We Can Play. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> this one I use underneath my eyes. It has a doe foot and I just take and put a dot in the corner of my eye and then I would take my sponge and tap it out and then immediately set it. Said I've had this before, but I've always used it really light as a highlighter, uh, but I am using it as a concealer now, so it's the shade of my foundation. However, <laughs> this takes the cake. This is the only concealer I have ever used, and I have used a lot. Let me tell you, that age spot right there, this one's kind of meh. I don't care if that's showing or not. But this one here, because I like to wear more sheer to medium foundations, when I put my foundation on, this spot always peeks through. Now, I have lightened it considerably with my skincare and with my Trophy Skin Microdermabrasion System. I did get that down to where even if I don't use a concealer, I'm okay. It's, it's nothing that bothers me that much. But I've never found a concealer up until now that actually covers it and stays there. Normally, I'd be like, conceal, oops, I wiped it off with the powder. Conceal, oops, I wiped it off with my blush. Conceal, it just never really stays. This does, even using it every day, I think this will go bad before I can use it all up. I'll show you why. This is how much you use. Lancome has a habit of getting rid of things that I call holy grail. If they get rid of this, Mommy and Daddy got me a new MAC paint pot for Christmas. So this is the one in Painterly, and I'm back in love. I've always loved MAC Painterly to use as an eyeshadow base primer. It is so creamy. I love it. All right. But it will dry out in about three months. This will start to dry out, and then it doesn't work as well. What happens at that point is the eyeshadows start to look a little textured. Keep this cap on here because when it's at that creamy stage, this is the best eyeshadow primer. I swear it is. And, or if you want to just knock out veins or whatever on your eyes and not even wear eyeshadow, this is, I love this. I don't buy single eyeshadows in a case, okay? I don't buy those very often. Okay, I never buy those. <laughs> If I buy singles, they are just the pan, so I can put them in a Z palette. This one I stocked forever. It's by Urban Decay, and it is called Lounge. 
it's been in my cart so many times that I can't stand it. And I always talk myself out because I go, Mary, don't do that. You don't pay that kind of money for that single eyeshadow because you have it in the Comfort Zone palette from Wet n Wild. I'm talking about this duo chromey kind of shade, and this is it from Wet n Wild. Okay, so it's like a blue-green and it's got red undertones to it. But no matter how much you build it up, you will never come close to Lounge. So here we go. This is Lounge. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? This is the wet and wild version of that. And I'll give it another try because some of you are die hard on this shade and you'll say, you didn't give that a fair shot. Let's try it again on the other side. That's got a little bit more of the blue. And I don't know guys, I mean, if I ever get my hands on Red Chameleon, from Sydney Grace, it might beat up Urban Decay because Sydney Grace seems to really, <laughs> really be a, a brand to be reckoned with. But anyway, I love it. Three lip products that I have. Uh, this was in a sample. I will be picking up the full version when this is gone. And I almost just tossed it in the trash because sometimes I put samples up for you guys, when I send you things, I'll send some samples. Uh, but I had opened this because I was intrigued by it, so that rules that out then. And when I saw it, I thought, who wants to put black glitter on their mouth? <laughs> uh, let me tell you, this is not what this is. They had different shades of this. It's from Givenchy, and uh, I'll write down here what it's exactly called, but it's a pH balanced, this shade anyway, is a pH balanced lip gloss. It, go, it lives in my purse because I don't have to mess with lipstick at all. This turns my mouth the perfect shade of mauve. So it behaves kind of like the It Cosmetics Je ne sais quoi lip gloss in that it gets its color from your own pH. You put it on, it's kind of novel, you put it on and go, that's sort of black and it's a gloss. But give it a few seconds and it will change your mouth. And I didn't know that. So I put it on one day just sitting in here to see is the gloss sticky? Does it, you know, it, it, it's not sticky. I put it on and I'm like, okay, it kind of looks grayish. It's not black, thank goodness. Um, but I don't really see this glitter. And then I went about what I was doing on the computer. Then I looked in the mirror and I went, when did I put on lip <laughs> lipstick? And that's when I looked it up and found out that it works off your PA. I love the shade that this turns my mouth even more than the Je ne sais quoi. The Je ne sais quoi is uh, kind of a pink shade. This is more the color I normally wear, a uh, mauve. This is a bite liquid lipstick. It has this doe foot. I've been wearing the crap out of the next two things, okay? So this one by Bite, and I don't know if it will still be or not, but right now it's on sale for like seven bucks. I love Bite lipsticks, and I love these too. This is really convenient to throw in your purse and take with you somewhere, and it's just a gorgeous shade. So it's more creamy and more like a gloss than their regular lipsticks, but sheesh kebab, this is a beautiful color. Then I tried the uh, Buxom Vava Plump, and I wanna pick this up in a different shade. Um, so this one is Beg for Mauve, and it's gorgeous. Two, this is Beg for Mauve. These two I've been wearing nonstop since I got them, except for today, of course. <laughs> for me, I don't think it has as much mint as their glosses do, but yeah, I really like this. I think it hangs around for a decent amount of time, so does the bite, and they're just both beautiful. And they've been sitting on my vanity for the past month and I just keep putting one or the other. Sometimes I've been layering them together. <laughs> Sometimes I'll put on this and then I'll and then later I'll put on this and then I'll go back to this. My skincare is Mad Hippie Hada Lobo. Mad Hippie Mad Hada Lobo. <laughs> and this eye cream? Yes. 
thumbs up. It's really good. It's from the same line as the moisturizer I use in the morning that I love. It's uh, This is the Skin Plumping Gel Cream. I've talked to you about that before. And this is the eye cream that goes with it. It took me a while to get to this, but I use this eye cream in the morning when I put on my makeup. And I use the Mad Hippie at night. Milk Cosmetics. <sighs> All right, so I decided to give one of these a try. I don't usually go for high-end eyeliners because there's so many good ones at the drugstore, but I did want to give this a try because I'm always looking for an eyeliner that I can put in my tight line that doesn't transfer down to my waterline while I'm doing my makeup because some days, like today, I have a uh, nude flesh colored in my waterline and I have this in my tight line. And I had heard that these don't transfer and that they're so creamy and that they last, and they really do. On this end, there's a rubber smudger in case you wanna smudge it out, you know, if you're using it under your eye or on, on your eyelid. Uh, and then on this side, and I'm, I apologize, I haven't wiped that off, but um, it is very creamy and it's retractable. I have it in the blue. It's so creamy. I'm just barely touching this on my hand because I don't wanna break it off. They have this in blue, black, brown. I think that's it. Oh, and nude, which I'm going to pick up next. It's very, very creamy and it does last. This is the only one that I will come up in my tight line and not worry that it's gonna transfer down to my waterline. Now, I like the It Cosmetics Navy one too for that reason, but it dries out. It, that one dries out really fast on me. And you gotta push a little harder. This is so creamy, it just glides in there. This mascara I love so much I'm going to continue to buy it. It's not as expensive as a lot of the high-end ones but it's more expensive than a drugstore and it's a tubing mascara and I have fallen back in love with tubing mascaras. It's the MAC Extended Play in Giga Black <laughs> and um I was watching I know you guys are like stop talking about Mel Thompson but I'm sorry. Okay, I watched her videos enough to know that she always uses this on her lower lashes. And when I found out it was a tubing mascara, I wanted to give it a try. And I love this so much. Today, I don't have it on, but a lot of times recently when you've seen me, this is what I'm wearing. Today, I'm wearing the Monsieur Big. I need to finish that up. Um, and I wanna finish up the mascaras I have open, but this is the one. This is the one. It separates nicely. Look at this brush. This is so tiny that I can get in there and do my lashes and I think that it gives a more separated, like today. When, if I use too much of the Monzer Big, my lashes will clump together to where it looks like I got two or three lashes. <laughs> I have to go in immediately with a spoolie and, and go through my lashes to make sure that that doesn't happen. And that happens a lot with any mascara that I love that gives me va va voom lashes. It will also give me lashes that are stuck together. I don't have that problem with this mascara. I'm able to get a, a light, fluttery, long lash with this. And I really like it. We, uh, we acquired this television last month, and I can't tell you how much I love that big TV. Now, we have a massive entertainment center that my husband built for me a long time ago, and it took up an entire wall. Okay, so what we did was we took the top and we moved it to the bottom. And the bottom we took out and uh, actually cut up. I know, I was sad, I cried. <laughs> Took that, cut it up for pieces to go into the bottom half of it now. So the top is now the bottom, and that, since it took up an entire wall, left the whole top of it to hold this television. We could actually go comfortably 88 on the top of that. <laughs> it's amazing. I love that television, and it is upscaling high definition to 4K. And it's doing a really good job. It's not doing a bad job with the standard definition videos that we have. I'm pretty impressed with that too. So really, really, really love this television. Okay, so this is a meat thermometer that I picked up on Amazon because I got an air fryer. We'll come back to that. 
I got an air fryer and I don't know, I've just always cooked in an oven because I've done it so long, I just know when something's done. But in the air fryer, I was having a hard time knowing whether or not something was actually done or not. So I needed a meat thermometer and I know probably every single one of you already has one. But if you don't, this is by Harbor and it's digital and it's easy. You just turn this button on, <laughs> yay, and stick it in the meat. The thing I loved about it is it was very inexpensive. So if you just got an air fryer and you loved it and you want to uh, have a nice thermometer that you can check while you're learning to cook in it, then maybe you want to pick up an inexpensive meat thermometer like I did. The last three things that I'm going to talk to you about are things that I returned. I got rid of them couldn't get rid of them fast enough. Well, one of them I did work out with. At least the better part of a month I worked with this. <sighs> and so I wanted to talk to you about those things because I think they're important too. The first one is the air fryer. I know it's a craze right now. Everybody's air frying and everyone I've ever talked to who is air frying loves air frying. See, I bought one for my son-in-law. My son-in-law wanted an air fryer and not knowing I bought him the three quart one. And they have four people in their family. But I didn't have an air fryer. I'd never seen one before, and I didn't know that they actually came bigger than that till I was researching for myself which one I wanted to get. I did get me the same one, except mine was a five quart, five something quart, and it was from GoWise. The reason it went back wasn't because it was bad. It's because I don't like air frying. Here's my synopsis on the air frying situation. <laughs> if you are going to air fry, because you want to get healthy and you want a healthier way of cooking your food, then the air fryer I bought would be a good one. And don't follow the cookbook. The cookbook, every recipe I tried in the cookbook was a fail. It did not work. It was like there was this chicken wing recipe in there. No, <laughs> it said put 16 chicken wings in there. They're like overlapping, even in the even in the big basket, they're like overlapping. <laughs> and they didn't, no, it didn't work. You kind of have to just use a rule of thumb like this. This is what I finally come to know. Use the same temperature you would in your oven and about half the time it takes to cook it. That's how I finally got it to where I could tolerate it. Following the cookbook, resulted in my family saying, are you gonna put it in the air fryer? <laughs> yeah, my family was tired of that. <laughs> I did make wonderful french fries in it, but gosh darn, if that's the only thing I'm gonna make in it, then if you're the kind of person like me that's buying the air fryer because of convenience, because you can't bend over into the oven anymore, it kills me, it hurts me bad to try and bend down and put food in the oven. I bought the air fryer to cook in on top of the countertop so I didn't have to bend down and hurt myself. I'm not necessarily wanting my food to not taste the same as it always does when I cook it. <laughs> and it doesn't in the air fryer unless you use oil. So like when I make french fries, I cut up the potatoes, put them in a Ziploc bag with olive oil, shake it up so it's all coated with the olive oil, right? And then I pour that in the basket. Essentially, I'm doing the same thing that I do in the oven, which is not really what the air fryer's for. Put it in there. Oh, those taste really good. They have oil on them. Everything I put in there is going to have oil on it. So I'm not really getting the health benefit from do, using the air fryer, but that's not what I bought it for. Some other things I didn't like took up a lot of my counter space that I didn't want. I had to move my Keurig over across the room because I couldn't put it where it was anymore. It was constantly blowing the fuse box. Where I needed to put this, I couldn't run the microwave at the same time. And that's crucial to me cooking dinner. So like I have things going in the microwave, I have things going in the air fryer, it wasn't working. I had to use the air fryer, then the microwave. If you want a good air fryer and you like air fried foods and you want to get a healthier lifestyle going, that was a good air fryer. Maybe you want to give it a shot because it, it really was nice. 
don't follow the cookbook. Air fried tastes different. Yes, it's crunchy, but it's kind of dry crunchy. You know, it's not crispy crunchy like I want it. I don't know how to explain this. If you've ever had air fried food, you know what I'm talking about, and you either like that or you don't. I don't. The other two returns that I had were makeup items. One was the fresh rose toner. <laughs> And this is kind of my fault. I didn't see this in person, so I didn't know that those aren't pictures on the outside of the bottle. Imagine my surprise then when I opened up the fresh toner and I shook it and I'm like, oh, there's actual rose petals in here. And many of you may love that. <laughs> if so, it's linked below. <laughs> For me, I have this weird thing that when I was looking at them moving in there and stuff, I was grossed out. I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> and I couldn't get over the thought that those rose petals were taking up space. Like I was getting less product because those rose petals were in there taking up space, right? So I used it one day. In the morning, I used it. In the evening, I used it. I did not feel super hydrated, so I took it back. The last thing is the Dominique Berries and Cream Eyeshadow Palette. I'm sorry right now to those of you who love this palette, but for me, and I don't know if you've seen my eyeshadow video yet, but if you see that before this, you know exactly why. If not, what I really didn't like was the microscopic glitter that was in these shades that kept transferring up on my lid, even with a glitter glue, and falling down onto my face. The shades with the stars are the ones I mean. The mattes performed well, though the black I did not feel was as pigmented as I wanted it to be. With all the shimmery shades that I would have used for my lids being taken out of the equation, I felt like it just wasn't a good enough palette to keep, and so I took it back. We are to the end, and I know you're like, thank goodness we were dying for you to shut your mouth, if you're even still here. <laughs> if you are, oh my goodness, I love you so much. Thank you for sticking with me. I want to make sure that you guys know how much you mean to me and that you're the best part of the Fritzy family. Ah, did it again. I'm so good. The world's greatest driver. <laughs> if you're not having a blessed day, please go out and be a blessing to somebody else. And until next time, love you. See ya. Bye. And I'm out. And then this one is the Glow Misk. Misk. It's a Glow Misk. <laughs> Clearly it doesn't have a K on the end. It has a T on the end. Glow Mist. And if you have like a little face than mine. Literal. Literal. If you have a literal face than mine. <laughs> I need to give my tongue a spanking. <laughs> While I was in the section to pick up this, I noticed that they had a five pack. Uh, pock. 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 <laughs> they had a five pock. <laughs> five pock. Five pock. Yay, go me. The large sponge. And. Whoa, whoa. In fact, I'm wearing all three of these today. No, I'm not. You idiot. I'm wearing four blushes today. Okay, hang on. I just gotta turn my phone off because. No. Siri, stop. No. No, I'm not talking to you. <sighs> to power off your iPhone, press and hold the power button. I was and trying the to. That appears on the screen. What is wrong with you? That's what I was trying to do. Oh. <laughs> wrong button. Anyway, <laughs> I did this video on these cottons, comparing them to Shiseido to see if they were the best buy. And they turned out they had no computers or anything. That. <laughs> <laughs> after, after I get done, it's like, the claw, the claw, the claw. Remember that movie? <laughs> Nothing can stop the claw! They have a hard sole on the bottom. How shoein'? Yes, indeed, I'm how shoein'. For you and me, I'm how shoein'. And this is a form of clogging. <laughs> this is the make we can play. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not French. I can't even say English words right. And you want me to get French even close? Wrap. All right, let's wrap, wrap that up.